Hello ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher and I'm back at home finally and uh, we're going to run this a bit like a story time. You guys have missed a story time for since ages. It's been like a couple of years since we did one because obviously big involved stories need like a big event and I covered most of the wow stuff. So this is more like stick it on in the background. The background footage is kind of irrelevant. Emma did take a lot of pictures. Uh, of the race to world first and she she's much better and this is why i hired her as a business manager it wasn't a case of just because she's my wife she's so much better than me at dealing with like the pr side of things um you guys are well aware like sponsor spots and stuff i'm really bad at them I, they come across cheesy i can't help it i don't know it's just how i feel about them i'm very much like an audience member in that case you know when people are reading out the sponsors and stuff and you're like Ugh. um so that's why, like, during the cast and stuff, it was Bay and things who did the sponsor spots. Because it doesn't come across as cheesy for them. Uh, but for me, I, I don't know I feel cheesy doing it. It's something I need to get over because it's important uh, that we do that. When we do have sponsors, that we do take it a little bit seriously. But uh, So Emma's going to do... She did a tour. She actually went out and about in London town uh, with some people. And she took a lot of pictures. So she's going to do that for Patreon. But for my side, it's more a case of just telling the story. All right? So the race to world first... How did I get involved with this? I actually got contacted a couple of weeks ago. I think it was about two or three weeks ago by Hotted. Hotted is the man, honestly. I know he gets a lot of stick uh, for like, why is Hotted there, right? And the, the truth of the matter is, and he doesn't brag about it, which is why most people don't know, but I'm going to shout out right now. He's the fucking man at organizing the stuff. Like, he's the fucking cheese behind it all. He's, he's one of the big guys who organizes all this stuff and gets the people involved and he's on the communication side of things like if you need something done you call hotted and he'll have it done for you in like five or six minutes he's so good at doing that stuff and he's reaching out to people he's talking to sponsors he's getting people involved um he was absolutely the golden star for me and he really deserves that kind of respect and it doesn't come across when people just seem doing the casting and things like that or on all craft but he's the one putting this stuff together behind the back scenes so Hotted contacted me over Twitter because obviously I've done all craft before, right? So he's got my details. And a lot of people don't have my details. I don't have business cards or anything. We did get them printed, but I don't know. It was at the first BlizzCon I went to, it was like Bajira and Cartoons. Those guys come up to me and they gave me business cards. And I'm like, it almost blew my mind because I'm just a guy making YouTube videos. I don't, although I run a business. And I've had business cards in the past with my old job. It made more sense there than when I got to like this stage and people are like oh give me, you know bajira is like giving me his business card i'm like fuck i don't have business cards <laughs> just tweet me like <laughs> or talk to me in stream you can reach me easy uh, and they're like yeah but you know business stuff you do need to do a lot more behind the scenes which we do do a lot more of now especially with emma uh but i don't have a lot of contact details for a lot of people unless i've directly worked with them or had a chit chat with them so hotted contacts me and is like hey <laughs> i think it opens something like this it just opened with like hey do you do you want to cast the race to world first and i said no i did turn this down at first which was a kind of gut reaction and the reason was of course i instantly thought i'm gonna have to miss all of the progression rating and i've been preparing for like two months for this i've been farming all year unnecessarily in my mind because gear was going to be replaced and doing islands and doing emissaries i did take a break over christmas but i aim to meet the goals that the guild put on me and we even had some streams where people were like what are you doing mike i'm like i've got to get this done for the progression race, because that's what I really care about. I really care about being there for my guild, and they're relying on me as well. The guild's relying on me to be there. That's the spot they've given to me, to so they could, when the raid starts, they can rely on me being there, right? So when Hotted called me and said, "Do you want to cast the race to world first? I was like, "I can't. I have to raid on. Uh, I have to raid." Is that that was my first response? And then I sent him another message back saying, "Look." I only raid Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We're not a hardcore guild. It's not five days a week, and I raid at these times. So if that can work around what you're doing, we can maybe do something. And as I said, Hotty was mine. He's like, I'll come back to you in five minutes. Uh, and I was in a raid at the time. I think it was a Wednesday that he called me. So we were having a raid. And <laughs> he instantly come back. He said, okay, look. We have a lot of guys coming down. So they had Bay, Sours, Tettles, Rich, Hotted, Jari was coming down. They had all these guys, JB, Darry, uh, all these guys were already in and confirmed. They were like flying over. And I didn't know this. I had no idea who was going to be there until the event was actually announced. So they went, we, we only actually want you from Thursday till Tuesday. That's it. That's all. That, I think that either that's what was left in the budget or something like that. You know, no details were given to me, but we only want you Thursday till uh, Thursday till Tuesday. That's all we want. 
So I was like, okay, so that means on Thursday and Sunday I need to raise. Like, okay, if we set up a raiding spot for you in the gaming sphere, because it was going to be in the Red Bull gaming sphere, uh, can you make it? And I was, I just, uh, I actually contacted Loz. So we were in the raid. I said, Loz, can I have a word for a minute? And I said to Loz what was going on. He was like, dude, fucking do it. Like, you stupid. Like, this, you're going to be involved with Red Bull and all this stuff. He was like, of course you should go and do it. I was like, fuck, but I'm going to miss, like, the Mythic Plus farm and all that kind of stuff. He's like, shut the fuck up. This is a big business opportunity. I was like, all right, all right, all right. So I went back to Hotsin and I was like, okay. Uh, so the only other thing I need, so I needed all these requirements is, um, we need Saturday. And he's like, okay, we've we booked you for Saturday off. And the reason for that is months prior to this, uh, the top tier Patreons who support this channel, as you know, the, this is a demonetized channel. Uh, those guys who do the, the most support for the channel, uh, they'd organized the meeting. They were going to come down to Manchester and have a party. And obviously being in Manchester, they wanted me to attend and I wanted to attend. I wanted to attend. So uh, I, that meant <laughs> before I even went to London that on what well, this, this is how it was going to work for me on Thursday morning. I was going to have to go to London. I was going to be there till Saturday morning, in which case I would have to return to Manchester, have a party all day, then return back to London in the evening and then come back again to Manchester on Tuesday. Uh, that was going to be my setup. That was the plan. So that was four trains, four trains at about two and a half hours each. Okay. So, you know, we're talking 10 hours on trains over about four day period. Not that big of a deal. Honestly, I'm fine with a lot of traveling. Like when it gets busy and you have to do a lot of traveling, I'm totally okay with it. So the guys who were coming to Manchester, I hadn't told them that I was still going. So I kind of held back. I was memeing a little bit as like, they know when this is announced that that probably means I'm not going to be attending this meeting that they've been planning. And they were flying in from everywhere to do this. Um, so they came in and was like, yeah, it's a sh uh, and they came in the stream like, well, it's a real fucking bummer that you're not going to be there on, on the Saturday. And I was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. They're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get on a fucking train. And I'm going to be back in Manchester first thing. And I'm going to be with you guys all day. I can't stay at the night, but I will be there with you all day. And they were like, that's awesome. That's really cool. So that was the plan going forward. So Wednesday, we had a great raid. And then I immediately stopped the raid and started packing. Uh, and actually, the race was progressing so fast. And this is where it got interesting. Because watching the stream on Wednesday and seeing where Limit were, it looked like by the end of Wednesday, it looked like maybe uh, Limit were going to finish the raid really quickly. So I didn't want them because you, you do get paid for going to these. Not a lot, but you do get paid for going down there. And I, I, I tweeted hot it. I actually tweeted it. I was like, are you sure you still want me to come down there till Tuesday, given that the raid might finish by the time I get there? Like, we don't know how hard Jane is going to be. I was like, are you really sure? Because I'm fine with it just calling it quits on the train ticket that's already paid for. And, you know, we don't have to do the hotels and stuff like that. Uh, I just sort of gave them an out, essentially, because I wasn't sure what was happening. Anyway, Hotted replied like, no, 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 no. It's fine. Come, come down, come down. I was like, all right. Uh, and then it kind of like, Maybe I was going to come down earlier and stuff, but it just left it the way it was. Thursday morning, then I said goodbye to my kids and my they uh, method had booked me the train for about ten o'clock. I think it was about ten a.m. So I managed to like go to the gym, get myself uh, get myself a little fresher, get you know get get the blood pumping a little bit, and then go and get the train, get fresh and get cleaned up. And I got on the train and I didn't get there because there was some delays till around one and. When I got off the train, I had a message from Hotter, which was like, where are you? Because they'd booked me in to be on from 12 till 4. So the casting's in four-hour blocks, right? So I'm like, um, I'm, you know, I'm just arriving in London. I'm just calling an Uber uh, to get to wherever you are, right? I'm just sorting that out. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, let me know what the timings and stuff like that. Now, obviously, I had my suitcase with me and my backpack. Uh, so I kind of wanted to check into the hotel dump all my stuff and then go to the arena but it became very apparent like in the car in i was actually in the uber on the way to the hotel it became very apparent that i needed to get there like right fucking quick i needed to get there right quick because i should have already been casting according to their schedule and somebody was covering for me essentially i didn't know that i just want to be clear i didn't know that i just took the train that i'd been booked so 
I said to the Uber guy, like, we need to change. I need to go straight to the arena. Uh, and they were like, uh, okay, change it on your phone, blah, 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 blah. So I got there, and it's in the middle of uh, a place called uh, Shoreditch. And if you Google Maps this place, it's a super hyper trendy area, like real trendy. It's next to a place called Box Park, which essentially is this building made up of tiny cubicles where businesses like trendy indie, like almost like indie game devs, indie businesses, can just set up stall in there and then they can also i think they're on short-term contracts so they can actually just come out and somebody else can replace them so if you're like a clothes designer you can make a bunch of clothes but not a great deal that's going to run a shop for like two years and just go in set up a shop and come out so it's very very hyper trendy also a rather poor area which is a real contrast to it so you've got a hyper trendy area you can't get like a basic sandwich in that area like you can't do that they're all very up you know up market with some sort of like pickle that came from darkest peru and shit like that uh but at the same time the homeless village essentially uh which is where all the homeless guys gather to sleep together at night to keep you know to keep warm is right next to the box park like it's at the back of the box park under the train bridge is like this homeless village so it's a real weird place but all the doctors and stuff live there so anyway uh, being a, a like a trendy area of london it's a lot of little side streets so the Uber dropped me off, and he's like, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. It's around here somewhere. That helps. So <laughs> I'm wandering around with my suitcase and stuff, and I've got Google Maps up, and it's saying you're, like, basically there, but I can't see a sign. I can't see anything. And I was only one street away from it. Because I tweeted that I was in London, I was on my way there, one of you glorious bastards was actually waiting for me to, ar- to arrive to get a picture and so this guy saw me, he's like, Mike, Mike. And I'm like, oh, this guy must work here, right? He must be looking for me. Uh, there must be somebody who's part of the team or whatever. So I walk down to this guy, I'm like, hey, and I'm ready to like say hello. Do you work for Red Bull? You know, I don't recognize you. You're obviously not one of the players there playing. And he goes, no, 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 I'm just here to get a picture with you. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. So I took a picture. He's like, oh, the place you're looking for is like right there. So this glorious motherfucker waited for me to arrive and showed me where to go. And I was like, awesome, thanks. So I had to rush in. So I walked into the gaming sphere with my suitcases, literally just walked through the door. And uh, this happened on stream. So I'm sure many of you saw this is they were doing Stonewall Blockade. And I walked to uh, the sort of like caster hangout. So it was a caster hangout. And I think it was Tettles who was on the couch. Bay was on the couch. Um, and it was like, hello, Hotted was there and all this. Uh, and they were like, right, you're going on in like three minutes. So I was like, just let me have a piss. I've just been traveling for like four hours. Just let me have a piss. So I was like, I ran into the toilet. I came out. And uh, I think Sowers and JB were currently casting. I think that's right. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Uh, so I walked up to, they had a monitor that was reviewing like what the stream was seeing so i said to the guys i'd never met tettles before uh, i just said to the guys you need to bring me up to speed like real fast because i haven't seen where they've been up to and uh bay and tettles were like yeah they've been on storm blockade for a little while now they're gonna uh wipe in a minute like they keep wiping at this one particular point you know they're really struggling to get past this and very like no way they're killing this kind of attitude and i was watching it and I'm like, okay, so they're using the safe spot because I hadn't seen that before. Uh, they're doing this and this. And then uh, they were about 60%. And I went, this is the kill. This is They're going to kill it right now. And, and they were looking at me like, no, no, no. They're going to wipe in about 5%. I said, no, no, no. I, could, I was just assessing the raid and looking at it. I was like, this is the kill. This is it. They're done. And it was like, no, no, no. You don't understand. In a minute, it's going to go pear shades. So I'm like, no, this is this is the kill. And they're, they're looking at it. It's like, I don't think so. I'll give it like 5% they're going to wipe. And Bay was the same. Bay was like, no, no 10% they're going to wipe. I'm like, no, you're wrong. This is the kill. And I was watching it. And it was the fucking kill. Like, I just, I was looking at it. I was like, there's no way they're wiping here unless they do something monstrously stupid. This is over. So I'm like, come on, boys. Come on. So the first thing you hear on stream is me screaming across the floor because they all stood up and they were cheering and stuff like that and i was like i fucking get in there get in there it got me super hyped for what i was doing so they killed stormwall blockade and immediately the i met the producer for the whole of uh, the event from red bull side it was a girl called susan uh marielia uh which will come back later in this little story believe me um little firecracker she is she's on the case this girl she was like running around she came out she's like right preach and i was like please call me mike <laughs> i don't want to be here while everyone's calling me preach uh, i was like call me mike as he's like okay preach <laughs> and she called me preach through the remainder of the event which is fine because i was down on everything as preach i understand it so i was just like right we're going to put you on there uh in about 30 seconds are you ready to go i was like sure i just dropped my suitcases at the side i was like i'm ready to go awesome uh and then they were like you need to be off at half past six right 
Uh, and I said, well, I need to be off a bit before that because I'm raiding at half past six. So obviously I'll need to set up the PC. I've brought my keyboard and my mouse and I need to put my UI on and things like that. Uh, so I'll need to be off a bit before that. So it's like, no problem. So I jumped straight on with Bay. Actually, my first cast was with Bay. And I was nervous a little bit, right? I don't really get nervous, but I was a little nervous because going into this, I knew one thing. If I fucked this up, you guys are, not just you guys, but like Twitch chat in general was going to absolutely destroy me. Uh, I knew that going in. Like every time, the, from the last world first race, I knew that any caster that maybe got a single mistake or something like that, whether they were wrong or not, gets crucified heavily. And that will appear everywhere. So I was like... I hope I don't fuck this up because I'd never done it before. I've never live casted an event before. Like this is the first time I literally had to run in and get started. Uh, so I went in and did my bit and I had a lot of fun with it. So the first boss I casted was Jaina Proudmoore. I didn't see any of the other kills besides Stormwall Blockade as I walked into the room. So it was the very first thing. I knew beforehand though from checking the stream on Wednesday that we weren't going to be on the couch, which is what I expected. Uh, so two things that I need to bring up here is that I was worried about. One, I chose a lot of Mimi t-shirts, like the old Royal Rumble one, uh, because I kind of thought they'd be a bit more relaxed, because last year it was just on the couch, and I remember seeing, like, Rich was wrapped in a blanket, and some of them were wearing pajamas, because it was very early or very late, so I thought it was going to be very relaxed. Uh, this time, though, they had, like, the booths set up and stuff, and I saw that on Wednesday, I was like, oh, shit, are they going to be pissed if I wear, like, Mimi t-shirts? Because if Limit won, I brought, like, a Captain America t-shirt, uh, things like that with branding on and because we were going to fight Jaina, i brought my christmas star wars shirt uh for the, you know with all the snow and stuff that's what that's what i thought about but i also had some like unbranded stuff should we need to do that uh but i was hoping i could wear the fun shirts like this one and i turned up and i was wearing the star wars one i traveled in that one i was wearing it because i was like we're nearly at Jaina. i want to you know the, we're going to get the star wars thing out it'd just be something to talk about uh and anyway no one said a thing uh, except for bay actually bay was like are you guys fine with him wearing this? <laughs> and the girl from uh, Red Bull, Susan, was like, yeah, it's fine. I was like, awesome. So good. I can get away with this. Uh, so I walked straight on and started casting Jaina. Uh, it went pretty well, but I was also aware of the time. And the fact that I hadn't eaten yet. So I I had some breakfast and been to the gym, but that was at about 8 a.m. It's now getting to 6 p.m. So I was really hungry, like painfully hungry, especially after talking for like four hours. So when it came off at 6 o'clock, I literally stood up and it was Dari actually went, you're back in five minutes, right? And I was like, what? Because I hadn't had a schedule. Now, this is important. This, there was a, apparently a Discord set up. Or not apparently, there was. There was a Discord set up. But because I'd been kind of last minute confirmed, everything wasn't really settled until like the week before, that I hadn't been invited to that because everybody else had been sorted a while ago. So it just been slipped under the radar. It wasn't anything other than that. So they were like, yeah, you're back in like five minutes, right? I was like, um, as far as I know, I'm not. Because, you know, I'm raiding in like half an hour and I still need to find food somewhere in London uh, to get sorted. And they were like, oh, well, on schedule, you're back till half past. I'm like, um, well, I, I said I can be, but I kind of need to like a, a pinch. I need to be off at least five minutes before half past. And they went, uh, how long are you going to be? I was like, I don't know. I just need to grab some food from somewhere. Um, I'll, I'll come straight back. If that's what you really want, you know, you guys are paying, like, I, you're paying me to be here. So, like, yeah, just give me five minutes to grab a sandwich or something and we'll go. I was like, okay, there's a sandwich place across the road uh, in the box park place. Go and grab a sandwich and then you, we need you back. So, I was like, okay, now I'm in a rush. <laughs> now I was starting to feel a little bit pressured because I really didn't want to let the boys down. So, me and Bay ran across the road. He showed me where to get food. Shout out to the big Bay. He's like, yep, this is where we go. I uh, went to this uh, really posh sandwich place where I just wanted, like, a chicken sandwich. That's all I wanted. He's like, no, we don't do that. I was like, but you have chicken on the menu, man. You're making sandwiches. Just make me a chicken sandwich. I don't want a chicken beetroot fucking honey mustard jam created under the shoe of a, of a, a god's nipple. You know, I don't want that. Just make me a chicken sandwich. Anyway, he went, well, I can make you this, like, chicken bacon sandwich. I'm like, fine, whatever, dude. Uh, and they made the best sandwiches, actually. They were really good. Uh, so I got this sandwich, and I came back, and, and Bay was like, you should eat this sandwich. Like, if you're really hungry, don't just take your time and eat the sandwich. They'll be fine. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to turn up and be a dick uh, or delay them or anything. So I said, I'll, I'll eat it during the raid. So I put my sandwich to the side. I walked straight back into the arena, walked over to the side booth thing, put a headset on. And it turned out they wanted me for like some analysis, like almost like a carryover, which I didn't know. 
a carryover from the previous cast into this cast, like bringing them up to speed. And five minutes later, they were like, uh, okay, Mike, you can go now. And this was only like quarter past six or something. I was like, oh, okay, because I thought I was going to be there till like 25 past. And I was like, oh, fine, awesome. Uh, so I went away, opened my suitcase, started pulling my clothes out in front of everybody to find my keyboard, to find my mouse. Uh, and then went up to the tech guys, which were the best, honestly. I know we brought it up several times during the stream, but they, those guys were so on form. It was ridiculous. Uh, I walked up to the guy. I was like, I need a PC. But he looked surprised by this. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, I need a PC because uh, I'm raiding from here. And he's like, oh, you can't stream. I was like, it's okay. I don't stream my raids. I was like, I'm not planning to stream. I just need to be able to play. And he's like, oh, okay. So he found me a PC next to Kana. So if you... And by the way, I want to point out here, I didn't really speak to the Method guys until two days ago because they're playing all the time and we start casting before they even get in the building right so you don't get chance to talk to the players so all the players are in the room and they're all doing their thing and you know some of them popped up when they saw me coming in and were like hey uh that was cool but getting to talk to them i didn't talk to sko until yesterday it's just the nature of the beast really uh you just don't get chance to talk to those guys because they're raiding and stuff so uh, I went over to this back-end PC, <laughs> which didn't have internet. <laughs> so Bay was with me while we were trying to sort it out. So I, I was like, can I copy my UI on just to make sure? It's like, yeah. So I went around the back of the PC and unplugged the keyboard and mouse that were already in there, plugged mine in. I was trying to get it in some sort of comfy state. Uh, copied the UI into the WoW folder, tried to start it up. There's no internet. So I've wasted like five minutes sorting this out. And I was like, fuck, man. So I went to the guys like, this PC's got no internet. And he's like, oh, uh, hang on a minute. So he come over and he's like, oh, I know why. Flicks a button underneath. Uh, and he's like, uh, it just needs to restart. Restart it, no internet. And it's now like 20 past. I'm like, the raid starts in 10 minutes. Like, I really need to sort this out. He's like, I'm going to have to give you a different PC. I don't know what's wrong with it. We need to give you another PC. I was like, okay. Uh, so I started eating my sandwich because obviously I can't really help the guy sort out a PC. He brings over another PC, plugs that one in. Says, right, that's got internet. Didn't have World of Warcraft either. <laughs> so I go to, like, Battle.net was on it. So I clicked on Battle.net and everything was cool. The guy just plugged it in and there you go, off you go. Sorted. Uh, and went away. And then I turned it on and I was like, this hasn't got WoW on it. And I clicked the download button. It was like 60 gigs. I was like, oh my god. This is a nightmare. So I went back to him and I was like, you must have WoW on like a server or something to distribute it to all the PCs in here, right? There must be some sort of like backup of World of Warcraft somewhere you can just copy it to. No, uh, no, wrong, wrong, there isn't. Oh God. So I was like, um, well, I guess I'll just have to download it unless you've got another PC. It's like, we haven't got any other spares ready. I was like, okay. Anyway, this dude from MSI... What an absolute fucking legend. What an absolute legend. This dude from MSI um, was walking around and he, uh, the guy just went, do you not have WoW or something? Has it on a portable SSD? Mm, the crispiest of moments. And he's like, yeah, just plug it in, copy it over. So he copied WoW over. This took another five minutes. And got WoW installed. Managed to get it set up and then the screen died. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason me and bay could not work this out for the live was a bail back me up on this is the the pc i was using had two screens but he hadn't because we just swapped pcs the other P screen hadn't been plugged in in any way and i don't think it had the power plugged in either uh, but for some reason the pc just did not recognize that there was only one screen plugged in or what i think happened just due to my knowledge of video production is it duplicates the setup somewhere to feed into the production room which is just space age like a proper space age production room uh you've seen it on several streams i think and um it just wouldn't recognize it that meant battlenet discord team speak the whole thing was not on the main screen so we had to sit there and like manually arrow them over back into shot and we had to guess were they on a on a hidden left screen or a hidden right screen right so there's nothing opening and bay's losing his mind he's like how is this even fucking possible I'm like i don't know shouldn't it auto detect that there's only one screen he's like you would think so but for some reason it's in an invisible screen that he's not plugged into this pc so it gets to i think it was about half past i actually managed to click login and instantly got a whisper from Loz and alex I was like can you raid i was like yeah i can raid wait a minute what am i missing I don't have a headset. Shit. I don't have a headset. So I went to the guy. I was like, can I just grab a headset? Because it's the only thing I didn't bring. I brought my own keyboard. I brought my own mouse. But I didn't bring my own headset. 
Mainly because I thought, one, you guys are bound to have loads of them down there. And two, mine's a HyperX headset. Right? I use a HyperX headset, the HyperX Cloud. Uh, and they're not sponsored by HyperX. But that actually did come back to bite me in the ass because they did have a ton of headsets down there. None of them were sponsor friendly. And because I was sat next to Kana, my headset would appear on the stream. I wasn't allowed to wear one. They had loads of headsets. Couldn't give me one. I was like, fuck. So I went, okay, I'll compromise with you. Can I just have some headphones? Like earbuds, something nondescript. Can I, has anybody got any headphones that they're carrying with them? And I can listen. I can't talk, which is a big deal. But I was like, I'll make a compromise just so I can get rating with the guys. Because we're starting now. I really need to be able to at least hear what's going on. Otherwise, I'm practically useless uh, for Mythic Raid progression. So they said yes. And I've got to say, all this time, Hotted was like, what's the problem? What's going on? And I told Hotted about the headset problem. And he was like, I got this. The fucking man. Two minutes later, Hotted came over with a proper headset for me. He's like, you can wear that one. I was like, this guy. This fucking guy sorted me out. So I got into the raid. Now, this is where it gets real weird. For my old school viewers, you guys will remember this. Now, this is like one of the most embarrassing stories for me ever, right? So about five years ago, uh, when we were just kind of starting YouTube, I told the story of me trying to get a graphics card before I understood really how PCs work. So I was still kind of a newbie. My brother had tried to teach me for many years, uh, but I was still kind of a newbie at building PCs and things. But I needed a new GPU, and I fucked it up badly now in that story i told you i went to a store that's not re really close but it's a good store called scan in bolton it's somewhere i recommend you guys check out uh and i told the story that everybody there is like a super nerd right it works there they're all super nerds it's one of the reasons i like it because they'll give you good advice and there was one girl who worked there who was like ludicrously beautiful and also a real geek but really beautiful <laughs> and i was like embarrassed how stupid i was <laughs> like trying to speak to this girl i remember there's this, this queue of people and there's about five members of staff working the tills and i was like i'm going to ask to, uh, to ask some really stupid questions that a neckbeard like me should know and i was like i'm gonna have to ask her and it did turn out to be her and i told the story about how she like laughed at me and like recommended like various things to me and, and then i still screwed it up when i got home and i had to return i had to go back and return it and all this kind of stuff um coincidentally that girl saw that video, right? So I'm in this video saying she, it wasn't like I was I was flirting with her or anything like that. I was with Emma at the time. It was just the irony of like having to ask these nerdy questions. And you guys can probably appreciate it. It's like this is a really beautiful girl and you're trying to answer these questions. She watched that video. She later got a job at a little company called MSI. <laughs> and she emailed me one day. So it's like, hi. You might not know my name or anything like that, but I know who you are and I've seen the video, but I did used to work at this store and you told this video about me back then. And I remember like thinking about it for ages because it had been years. And I was like, oh. and then I thought, oh no, shit. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. Uh, and we'd emailed a lot over the last few years because she sorted out the laptop. This is why I have... I have a really good MSI gaming laptop that I use for when I'm working away. All right, that's where that comes from. And so I'm sat at the casting desk and I had no idea about this situation and it was a pure coincidence. But in the corner of my eye, I see this girl and she's like, what the fuck's going on over there? So I'm casting and I'm like, and I went, Oh my god, like, <laughs> oh my god, what are the odds of this happening, really? And she was there, she was uh, doing the sponsor work for MSI, uh, obviously being MSI UK. So, I finished, when, it, when I was sat there raging, she came over, she was like, hi, like, not seen each other forever. And I was like, I know, right? This is so weird. And she was like, I know, this is fucking crazy, because she's supposed to be coming down to preach con and stuff. And I was like, this is the most bizarre coincidence ever. And she over, she was like, oh, yeah, she's still playing World of Warcraft and all this stuff. And it was just one of those weird moments that happened where it all came full circle from years and years ago. And then we ended up doing this method thing at the same time. It was fucking bizarre, man. It was real trippy. Uh, I did the raid. And I've got to say, I was so tired and I hadn't been into the hotel yet. So I'd, I'd been traveling, casting, and then raiding. I've been doing something nonstop since around about 7 a.m. So it got to, my raid finishes at 11, and this is the very first day. 
And I still didn't know what time I was supposed to be back, which was really like, ugh. Damn it, man. So I was looking around, and the guys raided till midnight, so the production team was there, and I was just walking around, because all the schedule and stuff was supposed to be on this Discord, which I didn't know existed at this point. So I just went, what time do you need me tomorrow? And they were like, okay, we need you first thing. You need to be in the, in the building at 7.30 a.m. I was like, right, where is the hotel? I'm going to bed. Like, that was my response. I'm like, where is the hotel? And they were like, oh, I don't know where you're staying. So I was like, I'm staying in this hotel. Where is it? Because everybody was staying in different places. Uh, they were like, oh, okay, if you go out here and walk around there, you'll find it. I was like, okay, I'll just Google Maps it and we'll find it. And luckily, it was only two minutes away. Now, it's getting near midnight by the time I enter the hotel. And... <laughs> It's a trendy hotel. It was a nice hotel. It was really comfy. I'm not slagging off the hotel. But their welcome thing, they have mood lighting in there. So the guy, when I was checking in, he was helping me out. Guy was bang on. Uh, He says, right, so the room's controlled by iPad. You'll see an iPad on the side, and it's controlled by that. I control your mood and things like that. I'm like, "Mm, what does that mean? Uh, So I walked in. It's glowing pink. This is like the welcoming aura they give the room. The whole room is glowing pink. It was so anime. It was unfucking believable and I, I walked in, and I was like, I cannot handle this at midnight, like, <laughs> it was so bright pink, I was like, turn it off, please, turn it off, but being a, a nerd, I still had, to, I unpacked and hung all my clothes up and shit, uh, because I wanted to, I wanted to get, make sure that when I woke up early in the morning, that my stuff wasn't, like, in a suitcase and stuff, so I took, like, the extra half hour, just unpacked, had a shower, got fresh, and all that kind of stuff, Uh, got in bed finally, spoke to Emma, who'd been watching it, and she was telling me that it had gone really well, so I felt pretty good about things, went to bed, got up in the Thursday, (coughs) sorry, excuse me, I woke up on the Friday, and didn't have to care about raiding now till Sunday, which was awesome, I woke up on the Friday, I did eight hours on Friday, and again, uh, Emma, all the Twitter and stuff, this is what I I made that video previously, it's like people were like, you know, spamming to get me back on, I was like, oh, it's gone really well there, that's good, because I was expecting to get crucified, I was honestly expecting to get crucified, um, which would have sucked really, really badly. People started getting sick because we were swapping and changing people so much that obviously we're using the same microphones. And obviously, the, uh, because there were so many people like in those chairs all the time, they're really good quality chairs. Uh, but various things out because people leaning and things like that. So one, I got debated by bass so hard. So I did my first cast in the morning with JB. Never really had a chance to speak to JB because JB had gone by the time I finished. I managed to say hello uh, when I got there on the Wednesday, on the Thursday, and then I'd gone straight casting. So I'd no, I hadn't had a chance to sort of meet and greet or you know build a rapport with JB. Uh, but that's who I was paired with on that first morning. So I got there at seven thirty. Where if you get if you get in early, the lads don't get there till like eight eight fifteen. Uh, but the stream starts before that. So I got there at 7.30. You have to do all the audio checks for the whole day and things like that. If you're first on, you have all this like little extras you have to do. Make sure the camera's in the right place. The whole camera crew adjusts things around, anything that's moved through the day. So you have all this kind of prep to do in the morning. And then, then you get started. But you get started literally before the lads get there. That was quite normal because obviously the lads are waiting until midnight. They get a little bit of extra time in bed uh, and then they all kind of turn up. So this is why you don't get to speak to the players, really. So I was casting with JB and we I think we, we just clicked. It was fine. We were both like on, e- on each other's side and you could have a bit of a giggle with him as well, which was really nice because I'd never dealt with JB before. Uh, obviously, I don't watch a lot of Mythic Plus, so I hadn't seen many of his streams either. I was aware of JB, but mainly because of the shirt thing, as I'm sure most people are. Uh, and sat down with him, got talking to him, and just smashed it out of the park, I think. Uh, I had a lot of fun with JB. It turned out to be just a great a great back and forth between us. Uh, certainly, JB liked the more technical stuff. I like to keep it a little bit lighter, which bounced really well. And so, had a really g- great show with JB. And the progression was underway. That was awesome. Then I got a four-hour break, so I just went and had a little nap. I grabbed a sandwich, went for a nap, uh, and then came back to do, I think, I did four to... I did 12 till 8? No, I did... 8, 12, and then I did 12, 4 uh, with the casting. So I did like eight hours that day. But then, of course, that was Friday. Saturday, I'm back in Manchester. <laughs> Motherfucker. So I was like, I finished at uh, 8 o'clock and I was like, I need to kind of go. I hung around for about an hour. I was like, I need to kind of go because I've got to get on a train at 7 a.m. Uh, back to Manchester. And they're like, what? Yeah, back to Manchester. So they're like, you're coming back, right? I'm like, yeah, I'll be back the same day. They're like, you're a fucking maniac. What are you doing? Uh, so I gone, I got up again, went back to Manchester, and I was tweeting, uh, talking to the guys who had already arrived in Manchester from the Patreon, and they were already like had a night out beforehand. And just said, right, I'm on my way back. I'll be back about 9, 9.30. And... Um, 
it was uh, Chiryu, actually. Um, some of you will know from the stream. Chiryu was like, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. I'll meet you at Starbucks in Piccadilly Station. So we met at Starbucks, and this was 9.30, and he was the only one awake because they'd been drinking. So I said, let's just find some breakfast, man, because I'd literally got out of bed, got back to Euston Station, got on a two-and-a-half-hour train back to Manchester. Uh, let's go and find some breakfast. So we went in a bar in Manchester, got some breakfast, and I just grabbed a beer. I was like, this is my day off. I've been traveling so much. It's like we're having a beer. And then everybody was like, we're drinking already? I'm like, well, I'm drinking already. And they were like, we're drinking already. So people started getting a beer. Uh, and more people started to show up, which is what happens. Because he put out the tweet. He's like, Mike's here. Uh, we're having breakfast in this place. And loads of people like enjoy turned up and all that. Uh, and more and more people started to show up. Uh, and then we're like, what are we going to do? Because I've got the day. My train back was at like 5 or 4.30, something like that. Uh, so I was like, what are we going to do? Let's go and do an escape room. I thought this is awesome. We had like five of us who had got out, got out of bed at that point. Let's go and do an escape room. I was like, cool. So I phoned the escape room place. And I'm like, look, we are like 10 minutes away. I know it's Saturday. I know you're super busy, but can you squeeze us in? They're like, we've got one room if you can get here in 15 minutes. Uh, so I was like, we're on our way now. I said, we're near Piccadilly. We'll be there soon. So we power walked down uh, to the escape room place and did an escape room with uh, two Brits, a German and a Dutchie. I think Enjoy's Dutch. Sorry, Enjoy, if I'm wrong. Um, I won't say his real name because it's on stream, but I do know it. <laughs> I do know it. it. Begins with T. Uh, so we did the escape room, smashed it. Right, we did this underground bunker. We had to solve a Russian nuclear missile crisis, which was awesome because obviously we we're memeing hard in there, and we smashed it between the lot of us. Uh, it was so fucking fun. Came out and more guys had started to arrive and couldn't find the town hall of Manchester. Couldn't find the town hall, and at this point, Emma had been on the phone. And she was coming back to London with me. So this was the plan. Because Emma obviously wanted to come down to London. She knew I was there. She wanted to see what I was doing. And she had arranged to come with me to London. And because Saturday was my night off, and we had to get back uh, my day off to do the Patreon thing, uh, and we had to get back for the evening, she would booked a show. We were going to go see the Book of Mormon. So... I went back and started drinking <laughs> in Piccadilly and I was getting pretty drunk. I'm not going to lie. I was like in a pretty merry mood. Emma calls and she's like, you do have a shirt, right? I did not have a shirt. She's like, I am not going to a show with you in the West End of London without a shirt. Like that is not happening. I had to go shopping in like a semi-drunken state to find a shirt to wear <laughs> to, go to, this, to go out in London when I got back. Uh, so I was like, fuck, man sucks so i had to peel off from everybody go into primark yes classy go into primark which is like a discount clothes store just find a shirt grabbed it tried it on do fine stick it in the bag back there and she was so angry she was like i told you to pack a shirt i was like i was gonna be on my feet all day in manchester drinking i'm not carrying a shirt with me all day so i managed to pick one up got back and by then loads more people had turned up uh for drinking so we set up uh, in the bar in piccadilly a load of drinks until emma arrived uh, got to see some really old friends from like that we met through PreachCon and stuff, which was great. And uh, got straight back on the train to London, where I was kind of like sobering up. I just drank water from this point on. I was like, I need to get my head back in the game because I'm about to be back in London. Uh, two and a half hours back to London. We got back at seven o'clock, and the show started at half past. Straight in a cab, straight down to the West End. Walked into the Book of Mormon and sat down as the show was starting. Crisp absolutely crisp watch the book of mormon which was an experience let's put it that way i don't want to spoil it for anybody who's seen it who hasn't seen it and plans to see it at some point uh because it is the show that's written by uh trey and matt from south park and it's definitely written by them it was fun it was a very fun experience but jesus christ it goes to some weird places there's some imagery i've seen in that show that is just i never expected to see it in my whole life uh but i did I did witness it all. I did witness it happening. Uh, so we watched the Book of Mormon. The Bay met us. <laughs> the Bay met us in the West End. And then we went for dinner in Chinatown. So we took Bay to Chinatown, which was really fun. Stank of piss. Just gross. Stank of piss and weed. That's all it smelled of. It was just piss and weed. And it was hammering it. I then called uh, the Red Bull guys. I'm like, what time do you need me in? And they're like, we need you first thing. <laughs> I was like fuck's sake so i needed to be back in the studio at half past seven and it was now definitely gone midnight i was like we need to get back because i know emma was up for cocktails and things bay didn't have to be up very early and i was like no not doing it not happening 
go back to the hotel. Go back to the hotel, just got straight in bed, back up at six, and then back out the door. <coughs> now, Sunday was when I found out that a lot of people were sick. A lot of people had gotten sick and needed days off as well. Like, the casters needed days off. Because Tettles and Sours, I think, had done a lot of eight hours, uh, which is a really long time to be casting. Um, I know it seems like you just sat talking about WoW, but if you think about the the amount of talking you have to do and keeping the show entertaining, it's pretty tough. So the guys needed a day off. I'd had a day off. These guys needed a day off too. So they had, mostly were taking Sunday off to kind of rest up and things like that. So I did like a lot of stuff on Sunday. I did eight hours on Sunday. And left, I think, I think I finished at eight o'clock and then Hotted and Rich came on. And when I was back at the hotel my phone started going and this is where it gets really interesting my phone started to go and it was um the guy it was trey actually i think i think it was trey trey was a godsend method trey uh trey was managing the guys his whole job was to make sure the guys were perfectly happy perfectly comfortable and also dealing with any problems they had with accommodation with travel things like that uh he was a godsend to those guys he's, he's he ordered like so much uber eats and was constantly like up and out of the place to make sure everybody got exactly what they wanted things like that uh trey was just like the god of sorting out the guys he made them so happy for the entire duration of the race they're gonna kill it tomorrow about 10 a.m <laughs> I was like, what? Based on what I've seen today, because I think it was Sunday when they started doing the splits. Uh, they're gonna do. They're gonna kill it tomorrow. I was like, huh. Right. Uh, and it was Monday was my last day. I, I wasn't booked till Tuesday. I was booked till Monday. I was booked from Thursday till Monday. So Monday was my last day. And I was like, right. And there's like, uh, yeah, they're gonna kill it tomorrow about 10 a.m. You're all right to do the morning shift, right? I was like yeah because <laughs> that means i'm in on the kill awesome and i was like why are you so confident you're gonna kill it for 10 a.m in the morning they were like scripes discovered something which ultimately turned out to be the troll voodoo shuffle and they've come up and try uh, scripe is super happy about what they've discovered but it's so late that they can't really implement that strategy now without revealing it to everybody uh, and they don't want guilds working on it while they're asleep so they're pretty sure it works and they're pretty sure that's what's going to get in the kill in the morning. So, are you good? Yeah, so I worded in Bay. I was like, Bay, you should go and ask to be on in the morning with me. Because if this is the kill, you want to be in on that. And he was like, yeah. So Bay goes over and he's like, uh, I'll cast in the morning. <laughs> I'll cast in the morning. I was like, cool, man. It's going to be me and Bay and Hotted was who's scheduled to be on in the morning. And I was like, this is going to be so fun. This is going to be so good. <clears throat> So I went to bed with the knowledge that they were specifically going to kill Jaina Proudmoore Monday morning about 10 a.m. That was the information that was given. Not just to me, by the way, to everybody. They were so confident that this was in the bag. And uh, I turned up Monday morning, the fucking door's locked. Bastard. Like, I turned up at for seven and the fucking door was, door was locked. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, and then I got a message saying, actually, call time's going to be pushed back till I think it was pushed back till nine. I was like, cool. So I just went and chilled out. Um, no, I didn't. No, this, I checked out my hotel. I checked out my hotel. And so I was stood outside the Red Bull gaming sphere and I've checked out of my hotel and I thought, the staff should be here by now, right? The cleaner, it was raining as well. The cleaner opened the door and he goes, yeah. And I'm like, because he was in there cleaning up the place. I was like, uh, I'm working here. And he's like, no. <laughs> no, you're not. Bye. And I was like, oh, fuck me, man. <laughs> he wouldn't let me in because he was like, I don't know who you are. Uh, if you have a key, you can come in, but I'm not letting you in. I was like, well, that's fair. You know what I mean? There's a lot of equipment in there and it's his job on the, his, his ass on the line and I'm just a caster. So I was like, cool. Then the produ well, a couple of the production team turned up and they were like, can't we get in? I was like, no. And he's like, oh, shit. So he put out a call. He said, right, it's 9.30. Production's not going to be in until 9.30 and they're the ones with the keys. So I'm like, shit. So I started texting Bay. I'm like, Bay, are you awake? Because, uh, you know, I'll come around to your place. Because they were at an Airbnb. Him, Sours, and Tettles were staying in, staying in an Airbnb around the corner. So I was like, wait the fuck up, dude. Like, I'll come around to your place. Because I've got my suitcase with me. I've got my backpack. And I can't get in a fucking building. And I've checked out of my hotel. I'm like scuffed in the middle of London, man. Uh, and he didn't reply. So I assume he's asleep. So I was like, fuck me. So I went to, uh, I just went and chilled out in uh, pret a -Manger, Very posh. Where a heroin addict actually uh, was following me around asking me for money. 
I was like, I ain't got any money. He was like, well, you're eating in pret a manger. You must have some money. I was like, motherfucker, he's got me by the balls there. I was like, I paid on a card, dude. I don't have any cash on me. He's like, mm, um, give me some money. <laughs> give me some money. I was like, I haven't got any money. I literally didn't have any money on me. And um, it got to about quarter past nine. I thought, right, that'll do. So I went back to the production place. There was like so many production people outside. And finally, I got to talk properly with the production staff because they're the ones who were like bringing up replays when I called things out and stuff. And they were so on the ball. And the girl who was behind that, uh, who was organizing every replay. Like, as soon as I brought something up, I would have, like, in my ear, like, we have the replay for that for you, Mike. Uh, she was a Counter-Strike uh, pr- production pro. She was so good, like, at picking up things really quickly and getting them ready to show on the screen. She was a fucking diamond. An absolute diamond. And then met the other production guys who were, like, all the editors, putting together the highlight streams and stuff. These guys were awesome. And then realized that there were people there from the ESL. I didn't realize this at, at this point at all. Like, really big cheeses in the esports world. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, this is crazy. And so I was stood talking to them outside. Finally got inside. Uh, Bay arrived and did the audio checks and stuff. And I think we went live that day about 10 o'clock. I think it was about 10 a.m. We went live. And the lads still weren't there. So what had happened is they were so sure they were going to get the kill, they did all their gear farming the night before, right? So 2 a.m. And then had been given more time in bed. So it had all been kind of like pushed back. Now, the Red Bull guys were also told pretty much that they were pretty sure they were going to kill it really early in the morning. So loads of the production team were in. Everybody was super hype and they were moving cameras around getting ready for the reactions They were like so ready for the race to finish this morning They were so ready for the race to finish So there was a buzz everywhere Everyone was like this is the day we're going to be done It's not going to be two resets This is a big deal Let's make sure we get everybody's reaction individually We need to make sure put this camera up here Put this camera up here Uh, I'm sat behind the desk and they're like right we're going to do this We're going to do that Um, So the stream started and the lads still weren't there, which is as normal. That's fine. And we started bouncing. Then the lads eventually turned up. And were like, cool, we're going to get started pretty soon. No, wrong. Mother of God. Uh, they didn't... We... They, they, okay, so this is how it went. They didn't want to reveal the troll reveal. Which, obviously, I can talk about now because it's happened. Um, so we weren't allowed to show any gameplay streams. Right? So uh, the guys were always like, don't check. We're not going to cut to any gameplay streams until they're ready. And this was also the time the guys decided to basically loot every server for BOEs because they knew they were going for the kill. They wanted every scrap of gear they could get. Makes sense. Like, I totally understand what was happening. Me and Bay talked for like four hours without ever showing any gameplay. And then the worst, I was watching the time because we started at 10, it didn't finish till near 2. Uh, I, in my ear, the message came that I was dreading because I was aware of the time. Not that it was a problem to talk for that amount of time without showing gameplay because we had lots to talk about. Uh, but we didn't know what was happening, which was the thing. We were told we weren't allowed to show certain stuff. Um, if people had been armoring, because we were looking at the armories to see how much gear the guys had gotten the night before. Uh, but then we were kind of like uh, told, don't look at the armories because you can see everybody's changed to a troll. <laughs> don't look at the armories. We were like, oh, shit. Um... Okay, so we can't look at the armories, so we can kind of talk about it, what we're seeing on our screen, but we can't show it on there. And people, I think it was actually Sean uh, from Wildcard, which has had its own drama recently. He noticed and was spamming the chat uh, that everybody's a troll, uh, but we were like pretending we didn't know. <laughs> pretending we didn't know. Uh, and we were trying to guess what was happening because we had no idea. Honestly, I had no idea sat behind the desk. We got like two hours in, like we don't know what the guys are doing, but they're doing something. So we did work, I did guess, like, what they were doing. They're, like, they're getting BOEs. They're getting every scrap of gear they can get because they're going for the kill. Um, So the buzz was in the air because the guys were super confident as well. Like, the whole place was electric. And then near 2 o'clock, that message comes in my ear because I think it was Sowers and Tettles who followed me on. Hi, Mike. And this guy was awesome, by the way. He was one, he's an, 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 he's a producer for esports at a major level like done dream hack and everything and he's like hi mike so we're gonna have to swap you out now and we hadn't casted a single thing and obviously bay was also pretty hyped that he was gonna be for the kill which he ultimately was so i'm really happy for him uh but this was my last cast like my train was uh i didn't have a train booked because they didn't know when i was leaving but this was my last cast that was it i was done and uh, my f- fucking face was like oh, fuck in one way we've done some really good work and that's what people said to us immediately so i just came back i came back to camera they were like right you're back in three two one i came back and i was like right guys i'm afraid that's it and the whole chat i mean i've got to give shout outs to you guys the whole chat was just like 
what? <laughs> Are you joking? No. What the fuck? No, 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 no. And I was like, yeah. Like, obviously, when you're casting, I, I didn't realize how much I'd want this. But as you're casting, you really want to be in for the kill. That's the thing. You want to be in for the big finale. That's the clip that'll be immortalized. I prepared, like, my build-up to it as well. And what I was going to say, if they got the kill, to really nail down how good a moment this was. I'd, in my head, I'd come up with a few sentences. I'd taken some uh, advice from J.R. Jim Ross. I'd watched some clips before of really epic moments at like wrestling because obviously I'm very I'm very influenced by wrestling uh, and have been on my entire life. So I had looked to J.R. Jim Ross to how I could make this moment as great not not just for me but for Method themselves. If this was the clip they were going to be using like at the next World First Race or to be using in PR and stuff like that, how could I make this moment absolutely perfect? Uh, for the guys i wanted the last like five percent to be really good uh to be a a real nice build up for the chat and for this moment and then when they actually get the kill exactly what i was going to say as that moment and the kind of tone i was going to have i'd really put a lot of thought into it and ultimately i never casted a single thing so i kind of just uh they went right we're rolling vt while we swap the casters fair enough so i just put my headset down and i was so deflated I just walked over. Darry was the first person, actually. Darry totally clocked what was happening. Method Darry, uh, who's their manager. She came over and she was like, I've been there. Sometimes you just end up casting and nothing happens and it sucks. And I was like, yeah, it does suck. I was very salty. I'm not going to deny it. I was super salty. And uh, I just, I, I went, right, I'll, I'll just going to take two minutes and then I'll be back in. So I just went outside for a minute and I was like, fuck, sucks. <laughs> that sucks. The production team, though, was over the moon. The production team was fine. It's like, I cannot believe you guys just carried that for four hours because they expected the kill to be at like 10 o'clock, right? We didn't even start the stream till 10 o'clock. And they were like, you carried that for like four hours with nothing happening. And the guys, and the stream was fine. They were having a good time. They were invested. They were interested. They were asking questions. We were answering questions. Like you carried the show for four hours without ever showing gameplay. And then I realized that the individually, like all the, the guys who were streaming from there, like Sko and Gigi and all that, they'd all shown they were trolls. <laughs> you could see it on their stream. They were streaming individually and everybody was a troll. I was like, what? Why did we even ignore this? We could have had a great talking point, but it didn't matter. So on the one side, I was depressed because obviously I didn't get to cast the kill and I knew I was done. And that was it. That was the end of my casting time. Uh, two, we hadn't seen any gameplay or any tries or anything, which we could have would have been so much better to cast, uh, or, or easier to cast, I should say. And um, not only that, but we glossed over something that should have been a really important thing. So I was very uh, that could have been a really good talking point for going forward. So I was very deflated. I came back in. I kind of sat on my on my own for a bit, and uh, Bay came and sat with me, and he was editing and stuff like. That. I was like, yeah, it happens. You know, what are we going to do? Like, we can't make sure they're going to kill it. And then pretty much immediately after Sours and Tettles uh, got on and started casting, they started pulling. They had done what they were going to do. It had taken them about four hours to scour all these servers and move the gold around or whatever. Uh, and then they started pulling. And I was like, fuck! If they kill it, like, now, I'm going to be so pissed. If they kill it, like, 20 minutes after I stopped casting, I'm going to be so pissed. And as you guys know, they didn't. They didn't. Now, I, everything started to come together on that stream. So I watched the stream for like two hours. I, st- I stayed there for like two hours. Uh, and the plan was, like, I didn't have a hotel anymore. Or, like, I wasn't staying. I was going home that day. And I didn't have a train ticket. So the plan was, like, book my own train whenever I'm ready to leave, essentially. Stay as long as you want. Uh, but, you know, book your train whenever you're ready to go. Okay. So I sat around for a couple of hours think, expecting to see the kill. Because, obviously, of course, I wanted to be there for the kill, like, so badly. And, um... Uh, Jinji came over actually and had a chat and uh, I hadn't spoken to Jinji yet. In fact, I didn't really speak to Jinji at all until yesterday again. Uh, but he was talking to some people and he was like, well, the kill could be at any time. We're just kind of having to do some reprogressing because we, we're not using sky steps anymore in the intermissions. So we've got to relearn that. Uh, make sure that's tidy and then do this and this and this. And while hearing that, like my radar brain kicked in and went, they're not killing it today. Uh, I, I just knew. I just knew as soon as I heard that conversation, I was like, they're not killing it today. If they do, it's going to be lucky, but this is going to be multiple low percent wipes and then the kill. And so I was like, might as well go home then. So I just knew. I could tell. I don't know why. I just knew just experience or whatever kicked in or just a lucky guess or whatever, but not that lucky, obviously, for the guys. But I just knew it wasn't going to die that day. So I was like, ah, shit. So anyway, I'm not going to be here for the kill. I kind of resolved it. I was like, all right. So I I just booked my train. I was like, I'm going to get off then because I want want to see my kids desperately. It's already getting to like 4 p.m. My kids, I was risking my kids being in bed. 
by the time I got home, which I wanted to see my boys before they went to bed. Um, so Emma had been calling me, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get the train now. So I, I, I hopped on the train back to Manchester again. So this would be the... Which is, this is the fourth train. Yeah, this is the fourth train back to Manchester. And managed to get back for about 7 p.m., I think. I got back for 7, and my kids uh, were still awake when they saw me. They went wild and all this stuff. It was great. It was really cool. And I remember been watching the stream. He's like, no, I've not killed it yet. I was like, yeah, I kind of suspected they wouldn't. And she's like, how did you know? I was like, I just, I don't know. I just had a feeling they weren't going to do it. Um, and then got, you know, got to, got in my own bed and, like, tweeted out, you know, I'm done and done. Uh, <laughs> so... Am I right? Did, didn't they not kill it? Or did they kill it Wednesday night? They did kill it Wednesday night, didn't they? I'm just making sure. No. This isn't Wednesday. No, is it Monday? Yeah, it was Monday. Um, I think they killed it Monday. Let me check this. Hold on. I just want to make sure my timeline adds up. I think they did kill it Monday night. I think I was wrong, actually. I think they did eventually sneak the kill. Uh, three days ago. Is that that one? Yeah. Rank one. And the date today. What day are we on? It was Saturday. So it was one, two. No, they killed it Tuesday. Yeah, so it wasn't the Monday. They killed it Tuesday. Um. Yeah, that's correct. So, <clears throat> I would say uh, they didn't kill it Wednesday. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but I think that's correct. Uh, they killed it Tuesday. So Tuesday they woke up. For the reset. And at this point, it was like, yeah, because that's the limit reset. Yeah, this is correct. Yeah, so limit were resetting that day. And Emma had the stream on, and I was just start, I was just starting to get back into recording some stuff for you guys. And I was at home, and I had the stream on. And I was umming and ahhing about uh, which project to get working on at the time. And I, I started work. And then when they got the kill... It was in the evening, I believe. They got it in the. You got it in the evening, like a couple of hours. Yeah, it was. It was reasonably late on, right afternoon, and <laughs> I tweeted out immediately, like, "Fucking, I can't believe they did it." That was awesome because if they hadn't killed it that Monday, then we were definitely looking at a potential reset because of how confident they were to do it Monday. Uh, so I was suspecting it might go to the reset. Their strategy would work. I knew exactly what they were going for. I could, you know, you could read it, and they were definitely capable of doing it. But they kept having these scuffy mistakes, so. I was, uh, Emma was asking me, do you not think they'll do it? I was like, mm, they can do it. That was my point to her. It's like, they absolutely can do it. Uh, but if they, they need to have a really, really good try where there's zero mistakes, which is hard, like at this level. So um, when they killed it, I was so over the moon. I tweeted out and stuff. And it was within 30 minutes, it was Hotted who called me and was like, do you want to cast the rest of the show? <laughs> And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? Like, the Twitter feed is like, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, from here? Do you want me to, like, voice over from here or something? Uh, do you want me to, like, call in or whatever? It's like, no, they want you back. And I was like, who wants me back? It's like, Red Bull wants you back. I'm like, okay. Uh, and at this point, and I had to say this, I was like, I, I was really worried that it was going to piss the other casters off. Because I know that if I was uh, in a certain mindset, Knowing that, like, another caster had been called back who had already left while the other casters were there, I would have been a bit pissed off at that. So I was like, I don't really, I don't want to upset the other casters because you've got, like, other guys down there. It's like, no, 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 it's fine. Like, it's not that thing. It's just that Red Bull want you back down. Red Bull and Method want you back here for the post raid show. And I was like, that's. How can I say no? But that also meant, and this is the disaster of this whole thing, my ability to progress with my guild was going to be completely done for this tier there was no way around it at this point so it was a now it was a horrible horrible moment for me because i realized that they wanted me for a show that started at 6 p.m on wednesday and thursday my guild raids at wednesday and thursday at 6 30 p.m and i was going to miss this reset pretty much of actual gearing for the progress and it's likely not to last too long for my guild so i was like i'm literally going to write myself out of progress here there's no return like I missed Sunday because people were sick and I had to uh, cast to cover that and people needed a day off. But if I miss Wednesday, Thursday, that's it. I'm out for this tip. And she was like, it's too big of an opportunity. You can't not go. <laughs> Which she was right. She was totally right. And I, I spoke to Alex, actually. I got on comments with Alex. I was like, Alex, i am got to go back. And he was like, okay, I understand. He said, it, like, it wasn't stupid. He's like, I totally understand. He said, you do understand that this means you're out for progress. I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. But I can't say no to this. This is like too big of a deal. And uh, I was sad. <laughs> I was really sad. 
Uh, and I took Ben for a walk. I was like, ah, this is sad. God damn it. There you go. Because obviously raiding Stubby is a great deal to me, but this was too big of a thing. And so I, I also had to have the conversation with my boys because my boys were so happy I was home because I'd been gone for like five days. Even though I was back in Manchester on Saturday, I had no time to go and see the kids. So I'd been gone for five days and then I was home. Daddy's home. And I was like, boys, I, I sat him down and said, boys, daddy's got to go away again. And they're like, why? Why? I was like, I've got to go. Like, it, it's a big work thing. I've got to go there. And they're like, it's okay. We'll look after mommy. The boys were great about it. And I was like, all right, I'll bring you back a present. Don't worry about it. Um, but we got to go. And Emma said, do you want me to come with you? And I was like, you can come if you want. Like, I don't know what the post raid show involves, uh, but you can come if you want, but I'm obviously not going to turn this down. And so she managed to get one day with me. So the next morning, so I had been back for like a few hours. The next morning, first thing in the morning, I was back on a train back down to London. And one of the top guys at Red Bull called me, which is what I talked about in the, in the video yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago, is that one of the, my phone went, we were waiting for confirmation on what was happening. Because like, I didn't know what was happening. We were like, we need to start travel out. We need to start a hotel out like right fucking now. But the guys were also celebrating the world first kill. So it was really hard to get this information going. Anyway, one of the top guys from Red Bull was running around. He goes on the phone. And he's like, yo, Mike, is that you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay. This is the kind of thing we need from you. We need knowledge, but we need it entertaining, and we need you to do this. And we, it's going to be a six-hour show, and you're going to be the the like the back of it. You're going to be like the face and the carry for it. Uh, and we're going to bring in some analysts. We're going to swap them in and out, but it's going to be like six hours. This is what we're going to do, and this is the kind of thing we need from you. This is what we're trying to get out of it. So we talked back and forth on some notes. I was like, am I going to deal with the guys individually so I can ask them questions? I want to talk to the guys. They were like, yes, we want that. We want you to look at it from this perspective, blah, 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 blah. We're going to, we're going to do all this kind of stuff. When can we get you here? And it's like, what time do you need me there? Because I can be there anytime you need, right? You just need to let me know what time you need. And he said 11. That was fine, right? That's not too bad. Uh, 11's fine. So I said, right, if I get a train around about half eight-ish, something like that, I'll be in London for 11. And they're like, fine, awesome, sorted, done. I said, should I just book it myself? Like, yeah, book it yourself, sort it out. Uh, so we got Emma, and she must start up uh, coverage. So back on the train to London again. Train number five. <laughs> train number five. Back down to London again. Repacked all my shit. Washed a couple of things. Got in the got in the fucking taxi. Off we go. Back to London. Walked straight into the Red Bull studio once again. Uh, Emma then went on a tour to London with Sours, which was, she was like, I want to go and see London. I was like, well, I'm busy. So when I got there on the Thursday morning, my job was to go in this back production room and go through seven days worth of footage pretty much and find stuff to talk about for each boss so they give me time slots now we had a bit of a back and forth uh with susan i was like i don't think we're gonna be able to do this we can give more time to this so it was like there was 20 minutes assigned for the first boss i said the guys one shot it you know like there's not much to talk about there but in the heroic they nearly wiped we could do that twist right uh so in the heroic nearly twice we can have a meme we can have fun we can make it entertaining uh we can you know uh, memeing on the lads is a good thing because the lads are really funny as we eventually found out uh but they, everything so far has been really serious with the guys i said we need to show that fun side of the team so uh me and sours did it for ages we sat in the back room and then because sours was only going to do half the show and then bay was going to do the other half with me uh, once we got to like mecha talk i was like if you want to go go because i'm you're not going to be involved in this section anyway it's like you're right so he he left tettles helped me out we managed to get the logs from method because there's one of the biggest mistakes we made with the post raid show is that throughout the days we've been casting we should have been time stamping moments because it, it came to the point where as casters we remembered really clear decisive moments showing interesting stuff like funny plays and also really good skilled plays we just had a VOD list. It was like, I had no idea when this was. And we should have been timestamping it then so that when it comes to the post-raid show, we can just say, well, that's the bit we want. This is the bit we want. Instead, we just had to sit there and kind of run through logs and run through the video. Uh, and Kona for Method was also a big help here. Kona had come down as a Josh. Josh was there. Uh, so Kona and Josh had come down and Kona was with us in the production room just going through it and ch chit-chatting and trying to remember stuff, uh, talking about some stuff that maybe we want to point out. So that was really helpful. Uh, so ultimately, we sat there for five hours, and I gave this guy, and I felt so sorry for him, this editing guy, this, I had a pen and a piece of paper, this fold-up A4 piece of paper, where I'd scribbled down the boss name, all the clips we wanted, the labels, timestamps, and little notes as to what they went with. And I was like, this is the post-raid show. I just gave it to him, and he was like, okay. 
I was like, this is what we need. And it's like certain things we need is like, this is uh, the reactions here are really good. Can we make the camera on the guy's face is really big for the stream? Because it's the reactions that are gold here. Like this is the bit we need to show. Um, did that and had about an hour before I needed to show. So I was like, I need a hotel. I need to know where I'm staying. So we're looking around. I was like, where am I staying? So I still have my suitcase and stuff here. Emma was out with Sowers uh, looking around Trafalgar Square, I think. And they were like, uh, okay, we've booked you into blah, blah, blah. I was like, awesome. Okay, so I <laughs> went back to the hotel, checked in, went upstairs, showered, came back down again uh, for production. Bay had showed up, went through, and then was like, I need the notes. Because this guy was like, I'll just, I'll just take all the notes. I'll get all the clips ready, and then you can have the notes back, right? To refresh myself of what was going on. So I came back down. I was like, where's the notes? The notes are now in the production room and they're using that for their like timetable as well. I was like, I need the notes to scribble it down. So he's like, right, I'll give you the notes back. This is Susan. He's like, here's your notes that you wrote before, but can you copy them? And I need those back. I was like, all right then. Uh, so we went and did that. Then the scale of what I was doing kind of like dawned on me. I walked in, they'd rearranged the whole room. We had this big LCD screen and they're like, right, Mike, you're like hosting the whole thing. I was like, oh shit, I've never done this before. Like, I've stood on stage at PreachCon, but I run PreachCon. Like, I make it as like easy and fun for myself as possible, obviously, duh. Um, <clears throat> nothing like on a production scale like this. So the scale of what I was about to do started to dawn on me. And uh, it was like, okay, you'll be here. Then you're going to be moving around here. There's markers on the floor for you. Uh, there was like six cameras, I think. Now, the cameras didn't have a red light on them to show you which one was on at the time. So the way I had to figure out which camera was on me was I had to keep it in the side of my eye, which uh, the stream output. And from there, I had to kind of figure which camera of the six was looking at me. Uh, in order to be addressing you guys, right? It's easy for me here. I've got one camera. But like at the time, I was like, I don't know which camera's at me. So before we came back, I was like, which camera's on me? Just so we know where to start. So I don't start side on and then go, hey, how are you doing? Uh, but that's how I had to manage it. Now, the post-rate show uh, was good. Uh, we had a solid viewership for that. But it could have been way better. It was it was just too long. And we all agreed it was too long. And we can concise it down and get it. We can make it much shorter and much snappier and much more interesting. But we had to do the first one. And this is what we said. Because people were like, hmm. It felt a bit dry. felt a bit uh, too nerdy at times. It's like, well, we had to do the first one to figure out which how to make it better. Like, there's no way of getting around that. It's like, it's nothing to be sad about. We just need to go through it. Like, the we've done the big one. Now we can make it better. We can all provide feedback for the next time we do the World First Race, how to make this much more interesting. And that was where we settled on that. It's like we all gave feedback. It's like it was just such too long. We spent too long on bosses that I don't think people really cared about. Um, and plus, it was kind of rushed because basically I just had to. I just went through all this footage and found stuff that I thought was interesting. And then we just had basic notes. So it didn't translate well. We didn't do it well enough in terms of... I mean, we literally started all the clips out like an hour and a half before the show started. Like, we finally got the... I finally finished the list because it was a big job, as you can imagine, is to go through all that footage. But it went okay. It went decent. But I was so hungry and so tired. Like, it was six hours. It was the most good feedback I had from both production and from the Method Lads. Uh, were like, that was just insane. Like, you just did that for six hours on your feet, talking, keeping the show going, asking questions and all that. Um... It was an interesting experience, is what I put. I wasn't overly happy with how I did. Uh, I think it was the weakest part of what I did was that show, but I don't know whether it's because it was just too long. Like, if it would have been shorter, I could have made it maybe, maybe made it better. Um, as I, said, I gave my feedback, but it was it was pretty hard on me, that, because I also needed a piss. Like, at about the four-hour mark, I really needed a piss. And there was just no time to have a piss. Like, I was, I had a minute or so to do stuff and i maybe i didn't know which videos are coming so if a warbringer of, of like jana was playing them yeah i could have gone for a piss uh, but at the same time i wanted to drink we also had to reposition where we were going to go where are we starting the next time swapping casters out when sours left and bay came in and all this kind of stuff uh so i really needed a pee for like the last two hours uh, <laughs> but it, it was hard that that was hard like my feet were aching my legs were aching so whenever it would cut to the lads uh so you got the lads on the couch right i was just like oh <sighs> Like trying to get my legs bent. So it was like I was one of those aftershave guys. You know, when you see in the supermarkets, you got to go, oh, the toilet. Oh, the toilet. Uh, so that was pretty tough. That was the toughest thing I did while I was there, was that post raid show. I thought we could make it much better. Uh, I did get to sit down sometimes, which was so nice to get to sit down. Worst part, though, worst part, easy. Emma went to a pub, got herself a couple of pints of beer and some food, and came back and sat just out of camera shot. Having a beer and a burger. 
Like Ryan, she's like, oh, hey, this is really good. This, this is awesome. This is really good. Uh, when that finished, because obviously that had been another massive day. Like I hadn't started traveling till ten. But from 10 till uh, the show finished, at, I think we managed to get it to 5 to midnight because they booked me six hours for it. So it was a six-hour show. Uh, I was like, uh, I'm done. I'm just going. I'm done. I'm done. Emma had, brought, Emma had saved me some food that she microwaved for me uh, for immediately after. But the guys were tired. And then it got to the last day. Now, this everybody had gone by this point. I was the only caster left at this point, which kind of makes sense why they called me back. Uh, it was because all the other casters had gone home. Uh, especially the US guys, they'd all flown out and gone home. Like So there was a real skeleton crew of talent left. There was me and the remaining Method guys, of which some of them had, had gone home as well. So, <laughs> like, Josh had gone, Kona had gone. Um, I think that was it. I think the original sort of seven was still there, seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, and then it came to this the last show that we did last night which was actually way 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 better than i thought it was going to be and it's a shame that less people watched it because i think the post race show was so geeky and it come from the day before and obviously it'd been two days since the race had finished so interest had waned a little bit it was a real shame because the finale show that we did last night uh not last night night before uh what day is it saturday so we were in thursday night the thursday night show was so good it was really so much fun. It was another six hours, but the time flew on this one. Absolutely flew. And it showed the guys in such a better light. It did so well for the guild. It was unbelievable. I was so happy for how they came across doing this. Uh, so it was just a fun night. And I encourage you to watch the VOD because it was really fun. Apparently the audio wasn't great, which obviously I can't tell at the time. But we're, we're all wearing lav mics and we're all moving around a lot. So it's, it's a problem that can happen um but we just did silly stuff now i didn't know what was going to happen so i came in i was called to be in there at 2 30 p.m so i had a rather, rather relaxing start to thursday which after the the wednesday night where i was exhausted it was good so it's probably also why it was better because i was more fresh i didn't have to prepare anything for the show either i was just there to host the show uh so i turned up at half past two uh, with a sandwich and did some great talks with some really good people who've been in esports production for a really long time uh, I got some of the best feedback I'd had from the production side at that point. Like, really, really good feedback. But everybody was really positive, and I don't take well to overwhelming positivity. That sounds crazy, right? But it's, it's, I also want the negative. I need to know, it's no good saying this was great, what you did here was perfect, and this was fantastic. It's like, I need the negative as well. Where do I improve? I can't improve if everyone tells me everything's fantastic, right? I can't make it better that way. Um, so I was being very self-critical and kind of looking for negative, but not, not, nobody was really giving me any negative. And I, I was like, what are we doing? And they're like, it's going to be fun and casual. I was like, right, that's fine. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And then the ideas came out, like the gnome race. And I was like, oh no, we're going into cliche. And a big topic that was supposed to be done was pet battling. I was like, did the lads know that? I, like, I don't think so. It's like, I don't think the lads want to do that. And I was very conscious that the lads would be miserable. Because it's hard to work a show where you think the guys who are putting on the show are not having fun. So I was like, uh... I was very doubtful. But they seemed very confident. Like, the, the production team seemed very confident. I was like, I'd really consider dropping the pet battle. Also, Josh was still there at the time. So I said, what we could do is a viewer race. Where we have, like, uh, Sko leading a team and Josh leading a team and have a, a heroic viewer race. Uh, that could be really fun because it fits the theme of the race and stuff like that. But Josh actually left. He came back, said goodbye, and then he left, which is a real shame. Uh, Josh was super nice, by the way, uh, as was Kona. These were the guys who dropped in after the race had finished and then left again. Uh, they came down just to have, like, joining the celebration, essentially. And so um, I it got to, like, half past five. And the show was starting at six. I still didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, I'm presenting, I'm hosting this show in, like, half an hour, and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, this is where the legacy of Bambusa comes in. If anybody did watch the post, uh, the second post raid show, uh, Bambusa was um, Susan or Marielia. Uh, Susan was they copied a character because they had no character capable. Like she didn't have a capped character, so they copied a character uh, from I think it was a boyfriend's account or something. <coughs> they got this character uh, in order to play in the raid, so they could get camera angles. But it was going wrong. Like, the, the, the transfer was down. All sorts of stuff was going wrong. Like, it was just a pain in the ass. I think the characters were original alliance, so they had to do a faction change as well as a server transfer. All this stuff was happening to try and get it sorted at the last minute. And 
I'm still like not done my sound check yet. <laughs> And I had two mics on. I had a lav mic on and a headset because I had to move around the studio a lot during the show. Uh, that I did know. What exactly I was casting and stuff or calling or hosting, that was still up in the air. Uh, so, like, they pushed back the start by, like, 15 minutes. They were like, well, just delay it 15 minutes. I was like, okay. And then it got started. And then it finally came to me. It's like, right, we're going to open with this game show, which they had mentioned several times. I was aware this uh, noise game show, Guess the Sound, was going to happen. It was like, cool. Uh, so we're gonna get everybody in the couch and they changed the casting ca- uh, casting hangout area into a presentable area so we're gonna have everyone on the couch and then you go host the game show i was like right uh and then you're gonna host the gnome race i was like okay so am i staying here am i going over there how are we getting the lads out of shot because they really don't like people walking off on camera they run a video while they change to the next setup right and they're like, no, nah, it's more casual than that. Just like, we'll go into the gnome race and stuff. It's like, what server is it going to be on? We'll figure it out. So there's a lot in, up in the air. And I was like, as the host, because I, I, I was worried, like, yeah, I was a little worried that I was going to look stupid. Because if I'm hosting and I don't know what's happening, you don't blame anyone other than the host for that, right? It just comes across like the host doesn't know what's going on. But it worked perfectly. It, it actually worked to my strengths in many ways is being more off the cuff. And it's possibly why... Uh, I enjoy it being that way is because it's like a web show. We have a bait when we do the web shows or when we did the web shows, it was like very like um, loose as to what we're going to talk about because I work so much better on the moment, on the fly. I work so much better that way. So it actually played to my strengths and I I really enjoyed myself. I had so much fun uh, because all they need to say is gnome races next. Right, I can do that. That's, that's cool, man. We'll get it set up. We can talk about the problems. And the guy's PC started crashing. So Kana's PC went kaput. Uh, Chris Potter's went PC, went kaput because they were, I don't know what it was, but apparently it had restarted a few times or something. It was just being unreliable. Um, often the case when they're so heavily linked up around, like the cabling and stuff to make sure they could see everyone's point of view and stuff, uh, it was all over the place. Like computers were monster machines, but they're complicatedly set up, so there's bound to be errors every now and again. And so that meant Potter could cast with me because I think I was supposed to be on my own. Um, which would have been nowhere near as good. It had been nowhere near as good because I, I, it's so much better if you can bounce off somebody. So I had Chris Potter, who I hadn't even spoke to till this point. He was great. An absolute fucking legend. And then I had Kana with me, and he's great as well. I had talked to Kana previously while they were raiding. We had had a bit of bounce at the back because uh, we were sat next to each other when I was raiding. So it turned out to be the best thing ever. The gnome race was super fun. The PvP duels were amazing. Uh, I really memed it up, like raising Narcles' hand and stuff like that as the champion of the day. And what was even better was the viewer raid where they got to hear the comms of Method and how relaxed and fun they were. And Deep Shades was having a massively fun time and all the guys were just playing off each other. And it was like they were in their normal raid atmosphere, which people probably predicted was super serious and stuff. But the guys aren't like that. They're having fun. They're enjoying what they're doing. And I even got to take a break. And uh, they were memeing me because... I was sat there, and my job, literally, I had this chair uh, where I had—I was on Discord with the guys, but my mic permanently went to the stream, and I could key up. So I basically had my finger over my key up button, and my job was to, like, if the guys were dry, if they'd run dry or something, was to kind of, like, pick it up from there and run with the ball, right? So if, if, if any, any point during this, the guys dropped the ball on their own comms for the stream, then I would grab the ball and keep running with it and then pass it back onto them when they were ready. That was kind of my job. So I sat there, and I didn't have to key up for like half an hour. I was like, this is awesome. I said a few things, but like, I didn't need to. I didn't need to get involved whatsoever. The guys were, were nailing it. They were carrying it so hard. So I just looked at Susan. I was like, can I take five here? Because I'm here for six hours. We've done like four hours, which was all, you know, all me and uh, doing my bit. But this this was the guys just running with the ball themselves. Like, they were sprinting with that ball. So I just said, can I take five? And I, was, I like stood up. I was going to get some fresh air. I'm like stretching because I've been, you know, doing all this. And they're like, oh, the preacher's so mad. He's leaving. Uh, Deep Shade's memeing me hard. Like he's th- <laughs> the producers are throwing Red Bull at Preach. <laughs> I was like, well, you guys are nailing it. That's all I could say is like, you've, you've taken my gerb. You guys are doing fine. Like I'm not there to like make myself the center of attention. That's not my job as the host. I'm not there to be the center of attention at all. If you guys are nailing it, fucking go for it man go for it i don't need to be like well look at me don't forget i'm here fuck that i don't care I, it's, this is this is your event right i'm just there to help pick it up if it needs a little help and i went for a break and i came back and i chilled and uh it was so tiring because i didn't think that stream finished till half past 12 and the guys looked like death like they were so done 
uh, and they killed Jaina in the pug, which was great. They managed to kill heroic Jaina with the viewers, which was tremendous. Made some stars out of Bamboozer and Robbie and all those guys. And it was like, right, Mike, you're back on. We're going to host the finale, the big ending. Uh, let's just get everybody on the couch this big, big goodbye. And I was like, do you want Sko to say goodbye? Because obviously it's their event. He's like, no, you're doing the goodbye. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so we've got the guys back on the couch one last time came back and i'm like which camera am i on i'm on this one all right cool and it's like 20 past 12 i'm super tired come back on blah blah blah. there's the finale and goodbye everybody and that was it that was enough goodbye everybody and i said any shout outs and sco shouted out the sponsors again i'm terrible at doing it so i sco shouted out the sponsors and stuff and uh finally got to say a big goodbye on it and came home yesterday and that's the story of everything that happened there, like behind the scenes and everything from my point of view. But what a tremendous experience. So fucking fun. So fun it was. I really wish I had been there for the kill. That's my only regret. Uh, obviously, I don't regret not casting the kill because it just didn't line up for me. Uh, but I really wish I'd been there for the kill, even if I hadn't been casting it. I would love to cast the kill, obviously, but I, it was a shame I didn't get to do that. But that is my little story, guys. I hope that's been fun for you. I know it's probably been a long time, but till next time till next time hopefully if they invite me back if i get invited back hopefully i didn't screw anything up but thank you very much for all the support during it guys because you guys were just amazing you were totally amazing the whole time and my twitter feed and uh reddit and all those sites still just like so so nice so thank you very much bye guys